each night, like I said, we have a special guest. And tonight is a, a very special guest, a Sheffield legend. And uh, one of my best friends of many, many, many years. And uh, we've done so many things together, achieved quite a lot of things. Got pissed occasionally we're together, once or twice. And uh, please welcome to the stage my brother, Mr. Jarvis Cocker. That's a nice welcome, thank you. Um, as, doing a, as Richard says, uh, this place is very important to both of us. Um, I, 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 had a look, I had a look at uh, some, would you like to hear some interesting statistics? First time I stood on this stage was the 16th of August 1980, 42 years ago, that was uh, Pulp's, yeah, Pulp's first appearance in Sheffield, there's a plaque that says it outside. Last time I stood on this stage was in November 1993, so it's nice to be back. Um, obviously, part of why we're here is the fact that the lead mill is in a bit of peril at the moment, as we know. Um, pantomime season comes early. <laughs> um, and so, you know, um, there's been a lot of stuff about it. Um, I don't know if you saw, like, when, when the news first came out, um, for some reason it reminded me of some posters that Pulp did years ago. We had these posters that said, you can't buy, and then he had, like, a list of things that you couldn't buy, like, you can't buy friends, though people do try quite often. Um, <laughs> you can't buy beauty, you can't buy love, really. Um, not the right kind, anyway. Um, <laughs> But, um, and it, you know that's a thing that I think is, is, is like the situation the lead mill is more than this building and this stage uh, it's something that's grown over the years it's a feeling it's, um, it's like a form of magic or something it's something that's been here for people and that's it's housed within this building, but it's more than the building, and I think that's hopefully, I don't know, Rich, something to do with these concerts, isn't it? To try and get that message over to whoever actually owns the bricks and mortar, that you don't own the spirit of it. Don't, um, you know. have some respect for a beautiful thing, you know. Um, so, we'll see where we get with that. But I didn't come here just to witter on. Um, there's a song here, this is a song, uh, Richard wrote the music to this and I wrote the words to it quite a while ago, I think, weren't it? Yeah, and, but we never did anything with it. You might see why in a bit. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you, Rich. <laughs> ah. It's fucking great. <laughs> <coughs> no, it is his boss, honestly. Um, but it seemed appropriate to play it uh, because this is also about um, somebody trying to monetize something that you can't monetize uh, that's beyond that. And it's called. Actually, can I nick a bit of water because I've gone all dry? He does that when he talks a lot. I know. 
Cheers, Pi. Um, unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it's called a sunset, and actually, as I was falling asleep upstairs, <laughs> not whilst you were playing <laughs> earlier on today, because like, we came down, we were rehearsing and stuff, and you know, like I can say it's it's the longest I've spent here for ages, and it was just nice to be there. And as I was kind of snoozing a bit on the settee, I thought. Um, because in the like the logo of the lead mill is a bit like a sunset, isn't it? Like that thing of a thing. Yeah, it was like a thing with rays of sun. So it's this is it's just you know I'm really overselling it. I, I, <laughs> I, it's better not be shit. I really over. You, you're not gonna think it sucks majorly. Okay, this is called a sun or a sunset. But the story of the song. It's my oh, turn yeah. now. All right. <laughs> All right. Cool. Is, is it was some bloke, wasn't it, who basically hired this hill and sold tickets for the greatest light show on earth. And it was a sunset. And people kind of freaked out going, you conning bastard, you know. But some people kind of got it, you know what I mean? Probably those on acid, you know. But yeah, this was kind of the vibe. You can't monetize such things. So uh, I guess that's what we meant, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Should what we just do it? Let's just, just play it. <laughs> <laughs> I scanned the menu options I did not have a choice I'd like to teach the world to sing But I do not have a voice I bought myself a ticket To the happening of the year The whole sky lit up with colours The crowd let out a cheer it's just a sunset Someone said Something that happens every day Yes, it's a sunset Someone said But now they've found a way To make it pay Well, I like to look at pretty things Yes, I like to feast my eyes I went to see the northern lights They were pale and weak And not as advertised So now I'm learning I'm learning about money And I am learning about law The first rule of economics Unhappy people will spend more It's just a sunset Someone said Something is coming to an end Yes, it's a sunset Someone said And just exactly how much did you spend? Oh, I like to teach the world has lost its voice and I'd like to buy the world some time some time and some choice yes I would like to teach the world to sing but I do not have a voice and I'd like to buy the world some time some time and some choice Let out 
Thank you. I loved that. I thought the lyrics were really um, double meaning, and I like when songs have that sort of thing to them. Um, I think my favorite part of it was um, the line about buying the world time and buying the world a choice because um, this had captions. It didn't really need captions because you could hear what they were saying perfectly, but but at the same time, it was good that it had captions because it was interesting the way that instead of saying some time, um, the way that it sounded, they threw it together in the first, um, like when he first sings that part, and it completely changes the sentence the way that they just changed two words into one and. Um, so it sounds as though somebody who's even more, more unsatisfied now that they've, um, purchased the sunset, now they want everything. Um, and people really are like that. They will get one sort of tier of something and they want the higher the next thing, and the next thing, and the next, and everything. Um, so there are a lot of really true statements in this song, and it's worded in such a very profound way, and such simple, to the point um, phrasings, and I just, I always love that. I think that he's just an absolute genius. Um, but the second time around when he says that instead it's some time with two words and um, it's like taking a step backwards and saying uh, you want to put value back into the world and not into the um, the next thing that you can possess and own for yourself. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, when I saw this in uh, a search, like I occasionally search uh, like to see if there's anything new with um, with Jarvis Cocker or Pulp or just anything, um, I was looking up and I had no idea that this, um, this video would be there, and I'm glad that it was. And then, um, anyway, uh, I really like it.